Welcome to our digital forensics training course. My name is Tim Myers. Uh, this is brought to you on behalf of Secreto LLC. Uh, Secreto LLC is a cybersecurity consulting firm here in the DC area. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just get right into it. So, what is digital forensics? Um, and the definition I'm going to give you here, as you can see on the screen, it's a very generic definition, but it's it's honestly one of the best ones I've seen in, in all of my years. Um, digital forensics is the process of uncovering and interpreting electronic data. The goal of the process is to preserve any evidence in its most original form while performing a structured investigation by collecting, identifying, and validating the digital information to reconstruct the past events. The context is most often for the usage of data in the court of law, although uh, digital forensics can be used in other instances. Um, I'm sure you can think of any other instance. Um, you can think of it as, hey, what happened to my aunt's computer? Maybe I'm not going to take it to a court of law, you know, but I'm going to use some of these techniques that's going to be taught in this course to try to figure out what happened. Did she download malware? Did her nephew or other nephew or other niece get on there and do something nefarious? Uh, these techniques can be used personally as well as, you know, in a corporate setting. However, um, before you attempt to use any techniques found in any of this course anywhere, Consult with the legal team that you work with um, and always can if you're not working with a legal team You're doing it on your own before you go out and try to sell these services consult with a uh, a Really good digital forensics attorney. There are several in the uh, in the DC area and all over the world, right? Okay Now that that's out of the way, let's uh, let's start getting into the fun stuff So how the series will flow um, this is the first step and what we're going to do is we're going to start with software write blocking. Um, eventually, we're going to make our way uh, down this full list. You can see down here at the bottom of the screen, uh, all through all of this, software write blocking, creating forensic images, all the way down. You, know, you got hashing, email header analysis, um, prefetch files, thumbnail caches, file carving. That's a fun one. Um, recovering passwords, mounting images, virtual images, uh, network traffic, and all of this can be found here at our meetup group. Um, and also, this structure here you see is, you know, we're following uh, a book that, that I'm, I'm going to say a popular book, but I'm not sure how popular it is just because this guy doesn't promote it that much, but he's a very intelligent individual. I used to work with him at IBM and now he's uh, he's over at Google doing incident response. His name is Michael K. Robinson and the book that we'll be following here in this course is Digital Forensics Workbook. That's literally the title, Digital Forensics Workbook. Um, and if you go to this link, you'll see it there. We have a link to the book uh, where you can purchase it uh, if you want to. Um, and he will be doing a guest appearance on this show or on this uh, series. Um, probably the next couple episodes, I'm going to have to carve out some time for him. He's very important. Got a lot of stuff going on, as you know, doing incident response at Google. They've got a footprint everywhere, right? Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So software write blocking, you know, what is it? Why is it important? Why does this matter to us? Why are we, why are we talking about this? Right. Um, you know, write blocking is designed to protect against unwanted modification of data on the target device, whether it's a hard disk drive, USB, uh, solid state drive, you're, you're hooking it up to your forensics workstation and you're trying to protect it. Um, and, and I guess some people might be asking if you don't come from a digital forensics background, you know, why is that important? Why are you trying to protect it? What's the big deal? Um, why are you trying to protect against this. Don't you want to do some type of modification? You know, there's probably a lot of questions floating around in some of these people's minds who probably don't have any experience in this. Um, and the answer to that is you don't want to modify anything. You want to, you, you want to preserve the evidence as much as you can. Um, and to give you a small example of, of why it's important, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll give you a small example here. Um, let's say just off the top of my head, um, imagine you're going to court, 
um, you're a state prosecutor, um, and you've managed to finally catch someone who is performing something highly illegal. You know, you can use your imagination here. Uh, I won't get into any specifics. Um, but let's just say your only piece of evidence uh, linking the crimes committed to that individual was that computer, that hard disk drive, that USB, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to acquire, right? Um, you get to court, and the defense attorney for this guy that you're trying to go after initiates uh, a case dismissal. And it was based on the fact that the evidence was tampered with and the chain of custody was broken. And don't worry about what chain of custody is. We'll get into that later. Um, but essentially, the judge reviews it and says, oh, yeah, okay, I agree. Um, you know, the data was tampered. We have no idea who messed with it. Um, so Mr. Bad Guy walks away free. Although it's typically not that simple. Um, I'm just summarizing for simplicity, right? Um, the goal here is to ensure that data integrity is preserved and accurate at all times. Uh, if you do this, it'll be one more thing um, that you can do to keep the bad guys accountable or to help prove your innocence if you're in a case, right? Um, so one more thing to keep in mind, you know, before you, bef before you start to go down that path, you always want to ensure that the software, uh, the software write blocking method that you're using um, is working and enabled uh, long before you ever attach this hard disk drive or USB to your forensics workstation. You want to have that set up because if you don't, um, bad things can happen, right? So whenever you attach a disk to a PC that has a modern OS, you run the risk of modifying that data. Um, you know, things can happen. As soon as you hook it up, um, one thing that I see a lot of times is Windows likes to try to repair stuff. They like to say, oh, wait, this is corrupt. Let's, let's initiate a repair. And when you do that, it changes data. Um, timestamps might be modified. Those timestamps might be overridden. So um, maybe that critical timestamp that got overwrote whenever you attached it incorrectly to your you know, forensics workstation was the timestamp that was going to finally piece everything together to put that bad guy away to say, hey, he was the one who, who did this. He was the one who did this, this, and this. And here's a timestamp that ultimately proves that. But it was modified because you didn't follow, you know, good forensic hygiene there. Um, all of these problems can pop up, especially even human error accidents. You pop up a, a hard drive and you go to save something and you go, oh, man, where did I save that? Did I save it? Oh, I saved it on the USB. I didn't mean to do that. So that's something that you can purposely do. But a lot of these other things just happen. Let's say there was malware. Let's say it's not even about a guy doing something illegal or or, or uh, unethical, or he's got some photos or anything like that. Let's just say he was distributing malware and we got a hold of his, uh, got a hold of his computer and we hook it up to our forensics workstation. But for some reason, we don't have software write blocking enabled and we're not using a hardware write, you know, blocker. So in that case, if he has malware and we have an up-to-date antivirus and anti-malware, it's going to attach and say, oh, wait, wait. We're scanning this new USB you're attaching to our system. We found something. Oh, and don't worry about it. We deleted it and we saved you. We saved the day. In that case, as a forensic investigator, you're like, oh, crap. I just deleted something. I tampered with the original evidence. Hopefully it wasn't the original. Hopefully it was a copy, right? Um, and we'll get into that later, too. But as a lay person who doesn't do this, you're like, oh, thank you. You did a good job. As a forensic investigator, you're like, oh, crap. So we don't want any of those oh crap moments, right? Okay. So how do you do this? How do you guys follow along? Well, it's easy. I'm going to show you. It's going to be fairly quick. To follow along, you can go to Windows. Um, just Google search uh, Windows 7 test images and just throw in the word Microsoft. Google's really good at trying to figure out you know, what, what you're trying to find there. Um, and you'll pull up a, a website that shows Microsoft free images. You can download those, launch those in a virtual machine. Um, I'm using VirtualBox, which is free on Mac OS. Um, so let's go through the demo. Let me know if you have any questions, you're having any problems. Feel free to check out our meetup group posted at the beginning of the slides. And uh, let's go through this demo. OK, so let me.
do this. There we go. Okay, here we go. So we're in the system. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I have a USB already attached. So what I'm doing now is I'm physically plugging it in. Like, hey, this is my forensic workstation that you see here on IE9 Windows 7. It's really not, but let's pretend I'm attaching it. I just attached it. You say, hey, this had a little glitch there. Um, so what we did is we attach a USB to the host computer. The host computer then passes that on to the virtual machine here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of show you that I can write to it. And by write to it just means alter anything inside of it. I can drag and drop files. As you can see here, it happens there. Let's go ahead, uh, delete that. That's fine if I delete it because I have a copy here. Okay, let's see. Can we do a new text file? Let's just create something so we can edit things to make it a little bit easier. Let's call this software write block test, right? Because we want to do a software write block test. Let's say, hi, this is line one. Now we're going to do a save that. Did it save? Yep, okay, so it saved. So we can write to it right now. So the way to stop your host system, in this case, this virtual machine, from grabbing a USB stick, automatically mounting it, uh, indexing it, looking at it and saying, hey, I can write to this. Um, what we have to do is we have to go into the start menu. We're just gonna type in regedit. As you can see, it pops up. It's built into Windows natively. We're going to run it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to look for the following key, which is going to be H key local machine. Then we're going to find the sub key system, right? Then what we're going to do is find the sub key into that is control, okay? Then what we're going to do is right click on control and we're going to say new and then a new key. And the new key, which I'm not going to type here, but the new key is going to be storage device policies, okay? So let me just delete that one. That's the one I just created. It has nothing in it. What you're going to do is do that. I've already done it. So then once you have that, what you're going to do is right in here, this right side of the window, you're going to right click. You're going to go to new and you're going to go to D word 32 bit value. So now what you're going to call this is important. You can label it anything. You can label it. Uh, I got a brand new car, whatever you want. My computer, it's not going to do anything unless you put in these magic words, right? Protect. Okay. You got to do right. Protect, um, without spaces, without quotes, just leave it just like that. Capital W and a capital P. Okay. Then what you're going to do is just double click it and it's going to say, Hey, you want to change the value, right? And you say, yep. And so what you're going to do is just change that to one. If you know, binary zero is off. One is on. We're telling it turn on right protect. Okay. And we told it to turn on right protect for your local machine system, current control set, control storage device policies. Storage device policy. This is a policy that controls your storage devices, USBs, okay? Okay, now that that's done, so that was super, super easy, right guys? Okay, so now that that's done, I shouldn't have to remount it. It should just automatically work, but let's do a test. I can still open things. I can still look at them, right? So I'll say, hi, this is line two. Now we're gonna to try to save it. Let's see what happens. Okay, I took it. Now, that's because we have to remount it. 
because it's still saving the old state. So what I have to do is eject it, which I just did a hard eject. I pulled it out. I don't always recommend that. Okay, just snapped it back in, get the same error. What I'm going to do is try to re-add it. There we go. It's open. Now we shouldn't be able to do anything to this. Just do a quick test. Can I write to it? Oh, error. The disk is write protected. Remove the write protection or use another disk. Let's try again. Okay, doesn't work. Okay, well, so I want to edit this. This is the file I created. I want to do, this is line three. This is my file, right? Okay, save. Oh, it says you can't, and it even tells you. It has write protection going on. Continue, it doesn't work. Okay, so it says, hey, why don't you save it as something else? Don't save. Right, so you can't even do that. It doesn't even let you. Um, it's not even an option, guys. That's one way to do it. And as you can see earlier, if you remember I told you in the slides, you should have this enabled before you ever stick that USB into your into your forensics workstation, right? Because it saves that state. Because as you saw, even though I changed, I stuck the USB in, I changed the policy, I was still able to write to it. So I was still, they were still causing integrity issues here. I was still writing to it. There's other minor changes, which we'll get into later, that you'll be able to determine what happens, but it saves that state. You have to you have to eject it and remount it, and that's what I did physically. So there you go. If you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. Check out the uh, Meetup group. Let us know what you think. Thanks. See you in the next one. Bye.